Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD. And yes, we are continuing with our penetration test lab setup. Uh, today is all about creating our Kali virtual machine. So let's get started. So first things first, uh, the last thing that I left with you guys was we created our Debian virtual machine and we need to create our Kali. So it's basically the same steps. So on your right hand side, we want to click on new and click on virtual machine. And then from here, you get the nice new virtual machine wizard. Just click next here. Provide a name to your virtual machine. I give it btnhd-kali. Hit next there. Uh, for your virtual machine um, network, I kept it as a default as generation one. Provide a memory. I think I gave it at least a gig of memory. It's pretty good for a gig. If you want to play around with the settings, give it maybe two or three gigs. It's up to you. Uh, Provide your connection. We created a NAT switch connection. I have to provide an IP address to all my virtual machines. Click next here. Uh, I actually gave it 20 gigs. Click next. Uh, from here, installation option, I actually picked install an operating system. And for my image, I just picked my Kali 64-bit ISO, right? And then click next, hit finish, bingo, done. Now the virtual machine is done but the operating system, the installation of the operating system is not completed as of yet. So with Hyper-V, you just double click on your virtual machine. It opens up and click on start and it's gonna load up, take some time and you pick your option. The option that I picked was graphical install, hit enter, pick your language, pick your location, pick your keyboard. And again, once you pick your keyboard, your location and all that other stuff in your language, just hit continue. And then it's going to start loading up the additional components. Uh, again, because I created a NAT switch, it doesn't have DHCP, so IP addresses are not being assigned to this virtual machine. So I, that means I have to actually manually, uh, you know, configure the IP. So that's the reason why I got a network auto config failed. Hit continue. I want to configure my network manually, so I hit continue here. Provide the IP address. Now for this machine, I'm actually giving it 11. I think for my Debian, I gave it dot 10. And hit continue, provide a, uh, a net mask, provide your gateway, provide your name server, then provide your host name, provide your domain name, and then it's time for you to provide your root password and make sure you confirm it. And then once you hit continue, it's gonna want you to configure your clock, so just pick your location, and then it's time for your partition disk. Now, for those individuals that understand how Linux partitions work and you don't want to use the entire disk and you want to configure uh, you know, it manually, go for it. But for this video, I'm just going to go straight forward and just let guided use entire disk. I'm going to pick my partition. And from here, I'm going to let my partition disk to be one partition. You are able to configure... Uh, separate partitions for your home, your var, and your temp. Again, if you understand the concept of partitions within Linux, go for it. If not, just use the default setting, which is going to use one partition. Hit continue. Uh, make sure you pick finish partitioning and write changes to disk. From here, read this because if you hit continue, it's going to constantly loop back. So just click yes here, continue. It's going to start installing the operating system and then it's going to want you to pick a mirror. If you hit yes, uh, it's going to go to proxy. If you don't have a proxy, just leave it blank. And then it's time for you to install your bootloader. Hit yes on that. Make sure you pick uh, the hard disk. And then hit continue. And it's going to start installing the bootloader within your partition. And once it's completed, there you go. Uh, you will eject your ISO from your virtual machine. And then just hit continue. Once you hit continue, it's going to finalize the installation reboot the machine once it reboots the machine it's time for you to log in now your username will be root and whatever password you provided and you're going to enter into your machine and how awesome is that now this is super basic this is just us installing kali within our pen test lab uh a lot of you guys have been like when are you going to push out the next video we still need to build our virtual machines for our windows environment as well as an additional unix uh, machine so once we're done with that, then we can get into Kali and start messing around with all the tools that Kali provides. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoy. Leave comments right below. Don't forget about hitting that like button and also subscribe. And please share out the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.